Hi everyone, welcome back to Abra Nale channel. I have asked various people to create one video completely cover the standard requirement of ISO 9001-2015 to oblige and to accept that request and this is the video for you where I am going to relate all the 10 classes and with interesting examples and so on. Let me start uh, as you all know that you, we have 10 classes in ISO 9001-2015, right? Class number 1 is scope, class number 2 is normative references, class number 3 is terms and definition, class number 4 is context of the organization, class number 5 you all know leadership, class number 6 planning, class number 7 support, class number 8 operation, class number 9 performance evaluation, class number 10 improvement so this is the 10 classes as you might know that there are first one two three scope normative reference terms and definition are considered to be non auditable classes the main classes are mandatory classes start from context of the organization that is four all the way to class number 10 right that is improvement let's talk about class number four Class number 4, you have 4 subclasses. The very first subclasses of class number 4 is understanding the organization and its context. Basically, this class talks about the interested parties, find out your interested parties, for, sorry, find out your internal issues and external issues. These internal and external issues shall not affect your ability to perform the long term. Ability, there is something called strategic direction word is being used. That means internal issues you have external list down everything and keep a close eye that it should not harm long term goal of the organization there is a word which is being used it's called strategic direction let's go to the another class 4.2 understanding the need and expectation of interested parties interested parties is a very interesting word very first time it appeared in the iso 9001 2015 interested party meaning like an organization to whom it depend on interested parties can supplier in the iso 9000 vocabulary it is called external provider you also have a clients you also have a employee you also have a competitors all these are called interested parties basically what it 4.2 tell us that we need to find out the interested parties right so then go to 4.3 4.3 is very interesting where it talks about determine the scope right is the scope of an organization like right? so why we need to find out the scope in the scope very first line it uses the word boundary so in when we say scope we always think that okay it's related to boundary for example an organization has got one location another uh, in another part of the you know country or place another location it has been considered that only scope word is been merely referring to uh, you know location no it is beyond when you say scope it means there are three things it means geographical location it means process or product which is in scope it also mean processes or portfolio in scope what an organization offers the portfolios this is what talks about the very important scope then the last one of the class number four is called 4.4 quality management system and its processes basically it, it talks about all the processes you have a main function you have supporting function combined together have interaction you can do an interaction with the help of process interaction matrix you can do an interaction with the, any of the document process approach document but the bottom line is 4.4 does state that it is to combine all the all the interaction all the processes within an organization that is all about class number four let's get into class number five class number five leadership very very beautiful thing about this class is the three way the standard starts with top management shall demonstrate 5.1 and then the 5.2 you will find it top management shall establish that is the next one and then 5.3 talks about top management shall ensure so every the first very first sentence it is starts with top management shall demonstrate top management shall establish top management shall ensure let's get into 
5.1 is basically it talks about very interesting thing it talks about the leadership and commitment a to j talks about various role number a taking the accountability for the effectiveness of quality management system and it has given the uh, a b c d e f g h i j k all these requirement uh, been given to the top management to comply and take care of the quality management system for example taking the accountability of quality management taking the accountability for the effectiveness of quality management system and promote the culture of you know process of process based thinking create establish the quality policy establish the quality management i mean establish the quality objective all these are been given then you have something called 5.1.2 5.1.2 is interesting where it talks about customer focus more in detail you will find it it only talks about you need to enhance the customer satisfaction you need to meet the regulatory requirement you need to meet the statutory requirement that's what all it talks about it then 5.2 you have 5.2 is very interesting in the iso context policy word we you know in is per iso 9000 fundamental and vocabulary policy you all know mean intention and direction of the organization right in this 5.2 you have again sub classes communicating the quality policy and you have creating the quality policy and communicating in the quality policy in that pretty much same requirement what was there in the previous version but only thing is we also need to give and uh, provide the i mean we also need to share with quality policy even with the interested parties as required right so that's what uh, 5.2 has to say about it 5.1 it talks about general uh, the general in the leadership and commitment 5.2 it talks about in detail it bit in detail about policy and 5.3 is all about organization roles responsibility and authority in that there is a new word uh, very very important word been authority that the person who is taking the ultimate decision that talks about generally we can we can label it as organization chart or roles responsible and authority and all that you can say so this is what the class number 5 sum it up then you have a class number 6 class number 6 how i remember this class is very very easy way a q p you can remember a 6.1 it talks about action to address risk and opportunity find out your departmental concerns find out your departmental issues right we can have it like risk register where all the departmental risk everything you can collect together and then you have 6.2 quality objectives and planning to achieve them right very interesting point so in the quality policy it to- talks about the organization a quality policy that means so quality policy has to be single has to be unique has to be one single document even though you might have a different organization different portfolio different entities and all that it has to be one but when it comes to quality objective 6.2 and planning to achieve them it talks about the plural you can have the quality objective at the departmental level at the processes level and all that right basically it, it, you, it you know quality policy should give a framework to quality objectives that's what 6.2 talks about it very importantly remember that not only we need to have a quality objectives but we should also have the planning to achieve them how we are going to establish for example we are creating the quality objective how we are what are the ways we will do it to you know accomplish that quality objective plan is essential is a part of the requirement now then you have 6.3 6.3 is all about the planning of changes when you do a changes what it says is take care 4.1 that is internal issues and external issues take care the uh, you know you also need to foresee the issue you need to foresee the issue you also need to see that what is the adverse impact it will give what is the consequences you can have you can also take care the 4.4 that is in interaction how impactful it will have for the every functions and all that so any change you do you are welcome to do the only thing is you have to do it at the planned manner that's what 6.3 has to say about it and then the class number 7 is an interesting class class number 7 has got support right in that the very first word is called resources the resources word in the iso 9001 2015 you will find only the word called resources right you will not find the word called resource right resources can mean man machine method 
method, material, measurement, mother nature, right? 5M or 6M you may call it. But one thing is very unique about it, 7.1 general, it talks about general, right? It gives a clarity that what is meant by resources and all that. And then 7.1.2, it talks about people. In the people, what is the art and what is their responsibility with respect to quality management system, all this. And then 7.1.3, it talks about the environment. What is the environment, the psychological aspect and all that. And then it talks about the monitoring measurement uh, resources. That is calibration, talks about the traceability to calibration, how we should have the um, meters, whatever the monitoring measurement equipment which you are using it, how it has to be calibrated, how it has to be traceable to an international or national or international standards. Uh, all this talks about when the calibration uh, meter is found to be defective, is not used, how to label it, how to identify it. More in detail, very, very explicitly mentioned in 7.1.5. The last is 7.1.6, a brand new class. The class is organizational knowledge. It talks about, you know, what is meant by organization knowledge, anything which are acquired within the organization, what is meant external uh, training and all this has been talked about 7.1.5, uh, 7.1.6 that's a brand new one. And then let's go to 7.2. 7.2 is very, very famous and anything when you talk about training, 7.2 is coined after. What is 7.2? It talks about competence. In the competence, when you talk about competence, you give a training plan. Once the training is there, what you will you, you evaluate it and then you check the effectiveness. For all of these, what is required is retained documented information as the evidence of conformity, as an evidence that competence uh, been there, right? So that is the record word is being used it as a retained documented information. So competence is very important. You identify training plan. You give a training, once the training has been given, you create a training record and have the evaluation method, have a effectiveness of training. That is also very, very important, 7.2. And then you have 7.3, awareness. And awareness is standard talks about four things awareness. One is quality policy, one is quality objective and benefit of QMS, everybody should know. And the last, everybody in the organization needs to know. The last and final thing is the implication for not fulfilling the uh, QMS or implication for, for example, you get a customer complaint, everybody in the organization or concerning department uh, must know and they also need to know uh, what is going on, what is the even a positive or negative, they should know. This is the four thing. One is quality policy, quality objective and then benefit of QMS, implications of not performing uh, the, you know, not meeting the QMS requirement and all that. So these four, uh, you know, the, talks about the class number seven, seven point three, right? Then you have that is awareness. Seven point four, you have communication. Communication, although from the ISO standpoint, it looks to be vague, it looks to be generic, but it conveys so much meaning to it. For example, it talks of what to be communicated, when to be communicated, how to be communicated, but more from the data protection, data provides. Uh, data protection, an organization will have their own policies, data protection policies and all that, right? That talks about 7.4. The last one is the very famous class uh, for anything document management system, 7.5, right? 7.5 basically documented information. It talks of various things about document control, how to create the document, how to have a nomenclature. First thing it clarifies, generally it clarifies 7.5.1, it clarifies that the document can be in electronic form, it can be paper form, it can be hard paper copy and you know, all the things it talks about it and how to create it the document and how to give a nomenclature, how to give a versioning, how to review the document, how to approve the document, what is meant by external origin document, all these clarity, very very detailed level it is given in 7.5, right? 7.5.1, 7.5.2 and 7.5.3. Let's talk about the next uh, class that is class number 8. Class number 8 is interesting one. Why it is interesting one? The structure itself is so beautiful, right? For example, 8.1 it talks about the planning, operational planning and control. And then after, once that planning, I mean once that planning has been done, what you will do, you will need to understand the requirement from the customer, 8.2, right? In, 
then the requirement then the communication uh, customer communication all this is been take, uh, taken care of. and then design and development design and development again you have a sub classes to it for example design and development general design and development input then in design and development uh, control design and development output and design and development changes all these are the sub classes in everything there are two words being very very carefully been coined one is called verification one is called validation verification again anything which you do like a error uh, proof reading anything which you do against the document is called verification that you will find that uh, this definition iso 9000 class number 3.8 and 3.10 you will find these definition as well. same like validation anything you do subject to very when validation you perform it you demonstrate it that is called validation these two words have been carefully used in class number 8.3 and the the other feature the unique feature about 8.3 is it also talks about record record is very very essential that is called retained document information right and then the 8.4 8.4 is a uh, control of externally provided processes right i think it, it talks about external provider is something supplier how to have that supplier how to assess the supplier how to have a requalification how to have the assess the supplier how to retain the records all of these in detail you will find it about the supplier management system about external provided processes and control all this if the organization wanted to outsource the process they are, they can do it but only thing is still they will an organization if they they are doing it they are just outsourcing with the supplier or sub supplier still it is accountability qm i mean quality i mean the organization has to take the accountability they should be aware of it and their performance the customer the supplier performance has to be monitored and they need to have a review mechanism they need to be assessed and all that and also need to have a requalification re reevaluation all these in detail 8.4 it talks about it the next class okay once the supplier has been identified what is the next class right 8.5 8.5 it talks about is actually production product and service provision you start developing the product right so that is actually it talks about identification traceability it talks about all these actually like how do you typically you control that one you have a set criteria all these in detail it talks about it and after that 8.5 8.5 what it talks about it uh, the, the re- i mean 8.6 it talks about release of product and service provision right so again it uh, when, you, when you release it what are the uh, you know shipment and uh, out uh, when, when you do anything we, what are the different criticality you will take care all this is being doable and then the final class is 8.7 con- non- control of non conforming output right again uh, once again it has been deeply dwelt for example when you get a non conformity uh, for example there is a customer complaint or warranty returns how do you take care of them how do you assess them how do you quarantine it how do you identify it how do you prevent it, it all these has been that you know greatly discussed in 8.7 that concludes class number 8 let's go to another class called 9 9 is performance evaluation in performance evaluation first is 9.1 9.1 is monitoring measurement and evaluation right so what you do anything you do whether you you have you can have a kpis key process indicator or kois or you have a metric all this has to be monitored measured evaluated and then you take an action right all of these things is 9.1 it talks about it 9.2 it talks about the internal audit so you can do an internal audit both the class 9.2 and 9.3 almost the same fashion the first line starts the organization can have can have this one at plan interval the frequency an organization has to decide whether the internal audit frequency or management uh, review meeting the the review period uh, organization has to take so 9.2 it talks about internal audit internal audit once again it gives the same like how it was there in iso 9000 2008 the same rule is there in iso 9000 2015 but only thing is audit frequency you can adjust based on the criticality and all that and the last you have a reference called iso 19011 
that is auditing uh, guidelines for auditing management system right so you you will find it like what is meant with judgment based audit where you go and take that you know previous audit finding previous experiences and so on and so forth the greatly there is one standard uh, called iso 19011 that is greatly discuss about how to conduct an audit all the seven classes uh, which we had seen in the previous video greatly discuss about the uh, the entire how to conduct an audit how to conclude uh, the audit and so on the last one is called 9.3 9.3 is all about management review general management review input and output so in general again it uh, it talks about management representative management review meeting you can have it at plan intervals uh, the, the organization has to take the call what is the frequency whether it is half a year annually or once in two years whatever the frequency the top management that is uh, has decided and that is the one and then further it, it gives a agenda precise agenda 9.3 point precise agenda like you look for the uh, you know the previous mrm uh, discussion you will review it and you will review the customer complaint you will review the supplier performance and so on so for clear cut uh, definitions and the agenda been directly specified in the standard and then nine then the output 9.3.3 that is the output of a management review the last and final class is called improvement in improvement you have a general it clarifies further what is mean by uh, improvement and all these 10.1 it talks about it 10.2 non conformity and corrective action i have done the separate video on this how to and uh, when you understand that ad a discipline corrective action preventive action better you will be able to understand this a uh, very easily 10.2 that is non conformity and corrective action the last and final class is 10.3 that talks about continual improvement when you do a continual improvement uh, the standard is slightly generic it talks about you can do an innovation you can do a breakthrough changes you can do you can seek the input from the internal audit you can seek the input input from the uh, top management and all that i hope uh, you find this video very useful i covered all the way from class number 1 all the way to 10 and i will be making much more useful video please do like share subscribe my channel you have wonderful day